time on the Gadget Show Web TV, John's grooving out with Sony's new MP3 headphones. I get you up to date on the latest tech news, and Otis has a go on Avery, free online photo editing software. Hello and welcome to this week's Web TV. Now, for those of us who love our music, the Sony Walkman is a bit of an iconic product. John looked at the Sony X series a while ago, but today he's got his hands on something a little bit different. Ever since the days of the original Walkman, actually wearing your music player whilst doing things has always been a bit of a problem. Whether you're washing up, washing the car, whether you're doing serious exercise, you've got to think of somewhere to actually put the player, and then there's the wire coming up to your headphones to get in the way at all times. Now, obviously, manufacturers have done some things to address the problem by making music players as small as possible, like the iPod Shuffle and Bluetooth headphones clearly have the potential to help by getting rid of the wire, though they never seem to have caught on. But now Sony's come up with what I think is a very good solution in the shape of this new W Series Walkman. It really is a wearable music player, and I think it's a very elegant solution. Now the band here fits behind your head, the earpieces obviously fit in your ears, and these uh, bars sort of stabilise the whole outfit and keep it under a certain amount of tension, and I find it keeps it on my head very well. Now, this is not a player with a screen, obviously, so you can either play through the tracks you've got in order or go for a shuffle approach. And to help you make your choice of tracks, Sony have come up with something called a zapping feature, which uh, can play either 4 seconds or 15 seconds of each track to help you make your choice. But it's not just the introduction, it actually selects a bit of the track that's supposed to be particularly melodic, a strong chorus or something like that in a song. I found this worked particularly well. It didn't necessarily come up with the bits of the tracks that I would have chosen, but it certainly helps you make your choice. Now, sound quality is really very good, actually, and uh, there are several different sizes of earbuds included, so you should be able to find one that fits your ears. Now, the bars contain the storage, um, only two gigabytes though, so you're not going to put your whole music collection into these. Um, and this bar on the right also contains all the controls. There's a volume control, rotary control to go forwards and back, press it in to switch the zapping feature on or off, uh, shuffle control here, and a USB port for connecting it to your computer. It only works with PCs, you can't use a Mac, although it does support uh, Windows Media Player and iTunes, as well as a simple drag and drop process for getting your music onto it. When you've stopped listening, just clip the bars together magnetically, the power's automatically cut off. It's really been very well designed. And it comes with a stand, which you can uh, clip it onto and uh, hook it up to your computer for charging. A quick three minute charge will give you 90 minutes playback, or for the full claimed 12 hours of playback, you need a 30 minute charge. Now, there's been some muttering on the internet that it's not actually very reliable, and people who exercise very hard say it slips off if you get very sweaty. Well, I perhaps don't exercise hard enough to experience that. Personally, I'd like to see a radio in it as well, but overall, I think it's a great piece of design with great potential for the future. Right, good news for you Spotify fans out there because they have recently submitted their first iPhone application to Apple and they hope to have it on the App Store any day now. But let's not start celebrating just yet. Because of the application's similarities to iTunes, it's far from assured that it'll make it through Apple's strict screening process, especially as it doesn't offer people the opportunity to buy tracks from iTunes. But we're keeping our fingers crossed that Apple will see the opportunities that the Spotify application will offer iPhone users and let it slip through the net. Now, for the media hoarders amongst us, you might be interested to hear that Western Digital has just unveiled its internal 2.5-inch hard disk drive for laptops, and it offers a massive one terabyte's worth of storage. Now, a terabyte is big enough to hold up to 250,000 music tracks and up to 2,000 movies, and I think it's safe to say that that should cover most, if not all, of your media collection. This now offers huge storage facilities for your laptop, so you won't have to carry external hard drives around with you wherever you go. But if a terabyte is a little bit too much storage for you, Western Digital are also bringing out a 750 gigabyte equivalent. Now, if you like to get a little bit creative with your digital photos, but don't want to shell out on expensive professional software like Photoshop, then Otis might have found the website for you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Photo image editing software is great for if you want to spruce up your photographs, like remove a bit of red eye or make the background look a bit lighter, especially if you've taken a picture in a tent in the middle of the forest and you forgot to use your flash. But sometimes it can get frustrating if you want to do more with your images. You know, if you want to get creative, change backgrounds or, you know, create a mood, a different mood with your photograph. This can be done using something that I found on the web called Avery Phoenix. It's a web-based photo image editing suite and it's virtually free. So all you have to do is you take your photos and you can create works of art. Now I had a go on it a little bit earlier. I took a regular innocuous photo of a robot and I turned it into something menacing from the future. Take a look at this. Now this was a, a communal garden robot. I took a picture of it from the studio, but then I changed the color of the background, which is what the software enabled me to do. And I created some blurs here and, and I changed the color of the robot as well. Now the great thing about this is it's all web-based. So you don't have to download anything. You don't have to install. You just uh, click on a link away from getting your, your teeth into recreating an image that you've already taken. Now, this is just entry level. I'll admit, it's not that great. It's got something, but it's not that great. If you know what you're doing, then you can get really creative. Have a look at this. This is something that an individual did with a cute picture of a kitten, and they turned it into something quite demonic. Well, he split it, and he took the eyes out, and the kitten beneath is probably gonna take over the world or something. If you look in its, look in its eyes there, it's got a real, evil look. And you don't have to stop there with just photographs. If you fancy yourself as a bit of a graphics designer, then there are other applications that Avery have provided that you can use to hone your skills. There's Avery Raven, which is like a web-based version of Adobe Illustrator. There's Avery Toucan, which allows you to create color swatches for changing backgrounds and designing websites. And there's also Avery Peacock, which is like a visual laboratory and allows you to create effects on your images by simply clicking and dragging different generators into your browser space. Now the great thing about the Avery setup is one, it's virtually free, although if you want ownership of the images you've created, you have to pay a subscription of $24.99 a year. Secondly, it's a browser-based bit of kit, so you don't need any extra space on your hard drive, you are just a click away from getting your graphics designer on even if you're artless like me. See what I did there, artless. Give it a go, it's really worth it. Well, that's it for this week on Web TV, but we'll be back next week though. And don't forget the first episode of the new series of The Gadget Show starts this Monday, August the 3rd at 8 on 5. Make sure you don't miss it because it's going to be a great show. Also, keep an eye on our website for exclusive behind the scenes videos after transmission. And if that wasn't enough, you can follow us on Twitter for regular updates on the show and become a fan of our official Facebook page. See you next week.